I'm going to tell you about worry and anxiety, and I'm very anxious. <laughs> so, I, I, I'm standing here hearing Elder Michael going on with this thing, and I just feel like, well, let me just listen to him now. Let me just stare. Let me just, I get so anxious to hear what he has to say. And he's going on good. What oh, I said, no, come out. You go outside. <laughs> but to God be the glory. Wonderful set of topics. Wonderful when the church of the living God can deal with real issues that f affect real people. Because are we real people? You have blood? Flesh? Your toe hurts you sometimes? When somebody says something that you don't like, you feel a way about it? Possibly anger? <laughs> And when things are not quite going how you want it to go, you feel a bit anxious too, right? And some people take it to the next level of worry. In that, it's not just being concerned, but it's taking it to a stage where it, you, are, you are so consumed by what is happening that you, you lose focus and you start to do some foolish things. You start to doubt God. You start to put the things that... You start to get into God's business. We. We start to get into God's business. Because each and every one of us at some point in time has had to deal with that. Worry and anxiety. And we usually worry about, not about things that happened yesterday. But about things that we have an expectation that should happen in a particular way. And is something for the future, Right? So Ella Michael is talking about worried about employment. Yeah, we're worried about employment. Some people don't have a job. And it's not just having a job. Because we get a job so that we can get money to do the things that we want to do. Amen? So we get a job. And we step up in life a bit. And then we lose the job. So we have plenty of expenses to deal with. And we start to, if you're, not a, if, you're not, if you're not really careful, start to worry. I was in that position. I'm in that position. Anybody else can, can, can? Yes. Just before Christmas, people said, all right, I think we, we won't need your services anymore because we're kind of too, too many of us. So, last in, first thoughts, that kind of thing. And bills are there, but I serve a God who is well able. I serve a God who is always provided. I serve a God who continues to provide. So, fret not. You know, it says that worry and anxiety are like two sides of the same coin. Same coin. So, we ought not to worry we ought not to fret we ought not to put ourselves in god's position one thing we can do make a list of all the things we worry about long list and then we start to pick out of that list all the things that we think god should deal with pull them out and say god i can't do anything about this one so that's your thing and then from from the list, the same first list, pick out the things that we should be dealing with. Well, we really shouldn't have anything left, right? Because if God can't do anything about it and we can't do anything about it, then why is it on the list? <laughs> but we find that we want to get up in God's business. And what that does is that that really distracts us from our how we ought to work with God and how we ought to see God. It really distracts us. And so we get worried about all different kinds of things. Employment. We get worried about wealth, finances. All about our health. Well. Some 16-year-olds and 17-year-olds are not worried about their health. They'll be fit and healthy forever and ever, right? 
Some of them getting stroke. Yeah. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure until they get it, they're not worried about it. Because that only happened to old people. Isn't that how we used to think? Certain things only happen to old people. Old people die. Old people get sick. But then we come to the realization that some things are going to happen to young and old. And so, when we expect, it's about our expectations. We have expectations that you will live for many years. We have expectations that you will get a job. We have expectations that we'll be uh, living a particular way. And when that does not happen, then we start to get so concerned. We start to get anxious and may even start to worry. And I, I, I found a, a definition for worry. I know that you had, um, it says it is uh, intense Worry is intense. Um, come on. Okay, sorry. Worry is to torment oneself with or suffer from disturbing thoughts, cares, and anxieties. To torment oneself. That not just concern oneself, you know. To torment oneself with or suffer from disturbing thoughts, cares, anxieties, etc. And it is also to fret. To fret. But what does the Bible say about fretting? Fret not thyself. Fret not. You ought not to fret. So therefore, when we start fretting, that means that we're not obeying the word of God. When we start to fret, that means that we're not taking the word seriously. We're not believing the word. And doing what the word says we are to do. And in Luke, 10, chap Luke chapter 10, verses 41 and 42, we see where Jesus, Mary, and Martha... They had a little conversation. Verse 40 said, Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. Tell her to come help me, man. I'm feeling the stress. I'm feeling the pressure. All the work is left on me. But who appointed her to do anything? She took it on to herself. She's tormenting herself. She's cumbering herself. Because she's doing what she thinks the Lord wants her to do. Many of us in church. Don't we think we're doing what the Lord wants us to do. And working very hard at it. And not getting the results that we ought to get. Huh? Working hard but going nowhere. We have to be so careful of that. Because when it's all said and done, yes, we must work when we come into a, a, into a fellowship like this. We must work. But our soul salvation is important. We must not be too, too, too busy working that we can't pray. We must not be too busy working that we can't fast and give ourselves a consecration. Because the physical things are good. But the spiritual things are, are those things that will last. Amen? And it is those things which will help, to, help us to hear that well done. We are all working for that well done. Then it says anxiety is distress or uneasiness of mind caused by fear of danger or misfortune. Kind of anxious because somehow we have a foreboding. We just figure that something is going to happen. Somebody says, well, I have a feeling that something is going to happen. Something bad is going to happen. I have this foreboding. I don't know what it is, but you get anxious. You start to look behind you, look around you more than you would. 
Because what? You are, as it were, expecting it to happen. You're not saying, Lord, I have this feeling, but I'm in your hands. I leave myself in your hands. You have to take care of me, Lord. Well, that's what I did with this presentation. Amen? So, Lord, they wouldn't put me up there and, make, and, and let me come and waste the people's time. So, I'm going to do what I can do. And you better help me. <laughs> you better help me with the rest. Then it's an earnest but tense desire. It's eagerness. That is what anxiety is. And it also is a state of apprehension and psychic tension occurring in some forms of mental, dis mental disorder. So it can get to the point of, of affecting, affecting us. I heard the term anxiety. anxiety. Um, doctors said somebody has anxiety disorder. And I, it was new to me. Suffering from stress. I mean, it's, it's so much common, more common now. But when I first heard it, it seemed very strange to me, very foreign that they, you could actually diagnose that. But it's because of our behaviors, how we treat with things, that people can say, well, you are not acting normally. You are acting as if you are being tugged. You are being pulled apart. You are acting as if, well, you're going to break at any time. That's what stress does. It stress and tension. That's what it does. It, it, seems to br it tries to break whatever it is, it is testing. Let us not get broken by, that, by the stresses of life. Let us believe that God is well able. And that he will take care of us. Fret not thyself. Don't be anxious. But we started talking about Mary. Martha and Jesus, tell her to come and help me. Jesus answered and said, Martha, Martha. Oh, Martha, 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 please. Thou art careful and troubled about many things. Too many things, man. Come on, lighten up. That's what we need to do sometimes, just lighten up. But we're not going to do that until we take the time to look into ourselves, so look into our actions, so look into our behaviors and say, why did I behave like that today? Why am I behaving like that now? Is it normal for me? Is this my normal? And we have to be careful when that new normal is something that is vastly different from what it used to be. Because we must have some amount of certainty about our, about our actions, about our behaviors. When we are behaving erratically, then we need to say, Lord, help me. It's about one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Don't ask me to do that. She's sitting at my feet. She's learning more of me. She's getting rid of some of her anxious fears. She's unwinding she's unraveling all the things that have her all tied up in knots let her be please so when somebody comes and they're just pouring out at the altar just laying prostrate at the altar they are having their relationship with the lord jesus christ praise the lord let them be glory to god so we get so caught up with the timing of the service what next is going to happen that we don't have time especially in a large congregation like this sometimes we can get caught up with that and we won't have time to say well this person is seeking the deliverance we need to work with this person on the deliverance and if one person in each service can can get deliverance then you know that in a little while the church will be delivered people who we never even thought had issues to be delivered from. But it's like a spark that gets a fire going. You get to understand that, yes, the Lord still works. Yes, deliverance is still in the church. Yes, the Lord still cares for his people. We don't have to worry and fret and get all stressed and get sick because the Lord is still in charge. 
So we worry about our health, we worry about our finances, we worry about jobs, personal relationships. You know, some people have children who they just worry about. And you have given your child to the Lord. You brought them to the house of the Lord to, that the Lord would just take them to for the blessing, right? That's what we say. We take them for the blessing. We give them back to the Lord. I said to the Lord, Lord, my children were taken to you and given to you. They're not, they don't belong to the devil. He can't have them. I'm going to pray to that end. They are yours, Lord. They are yours. We don't want to take them back and start our own thing. We just want to say, Lord, they are yours. I remember when I took them to you and they were prayed over and you, Lord, have to do something about them because I think they're going in the wrong direction. Our daily living, our failure and success. Some people can be afraid of success just as much as they're afraid of failure. Because for some reason, they're looking way ahead of where everybody else is looking and say, well, if I do a good job at this, you know they're going to be stressing me out. They're going to be calling me for everything. And you haven't even performed, you haven't even done what you're supposed to do yet. But you're worried about the next job, the next assignment. That's putting too much, that's encumbering ourselves too much. Amen? So let us take one day at a time. Because we are taking on too much on ourselves with this worry and angst and, and worrying and angst and being anxious ourselves. Well, you know, in the manual we have from one particular writer some reasons not to worry. It says worry accomplishes nothing positive. I put the word positive. Worry accomplishes nothing positive. When we worry about something, can we change the outcome? If we just sit here, fold our hands and worry, what is going to happen tomorrow? What am I going to eat? How am I going to find bus fare? What clothes am I going to wear? I just sit and just start to worry sick about it. Will that do anything? Not one thing. Until we get up and do something about what the things that we, we are concerned about, then nothing is going to happen. So just sitting and worrying is not productive. It's very destructive, in fact. It causes division, divides our soul, tears us apart. feel torn apart because here it is that you want to go one direction put in another direction and it's just tug of war tug and war tug of war pull push pull pull we've been torn apart then we're distracted we are distracted because it takes our focus off god when it takes our focus off god then you know that we're in problems matthew 6 Verse 24 says, No man can serve two masters. That's where the division is coming in. We cannot serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And when we get to the point of being so worried about the outcome of things that we do not trust that great big God that we serve, then we are taking things out of his hand and we are trying to fix it ourselves. Or, 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 well, we're just worrying about it. We're not even trying to fix it. But our mind is saying that God cannot do it. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not life more than meat, and the body than raiment? 
Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Are we not better, than, much better than the fowls of the air? Do, you, do we feel better than the fowls of the air? We can think, we can react to, 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 to things. We are very complex beings. And if God can take care of the fowls of the air, much less man who was created to worship him. Amen. We have a special place. And we must use that special place wisely. So distracted, we can become distracted. Take our eyes off God. Look to other sources that are not going to help us. Worrying is not good for us. In fact, it's unhealthy. It has emotional and physical repercussions. Some people, as the, as the term says, they worry themselves sick. Worry yourself until you believe what you start to worry about. You cannot walk down the road because what? Somebody's going to attack you. Even when you're in a group, you cannot walk down the road. Your mind is captivated by fear. Say, well, no, I can't make it. I can't do it. And when we are at that extent, then we have to make sure that we pull back. We've got to pull back. We don't want to be emotionally enslaved and physically sick because of the things that, 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 that we think. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? Why worry about your clothing? Huh? That's another translation of Matthew 6, 27 to 29. Look at the lilies of the field, how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. Worry is not good for us. Worry can cause us physical and emotional problems. Proverbs 12, 25. So worry weighs a person down. An encouraging word cheers a person up. And that's from the new translation. But I want to find it in, 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 in the Proverbs 12, 25. It has a little different slant to it. It says, Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop. You know, you're, you're heavy in heart. You heard that term already, right? You have a heavy heart. You're heavy in a heart. It's just, there's just something that, and we, we excuse it, say, I can't put my finger on it. But I have a feeling that something is not going right. Worried sick and don't know what you're worried about. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop. But a good word maketh it glad. You see why we have to be positive when we are around people? See why we have to bring words of comfort and of cheer? We cannot be like the miserable comforters. Somebody's looking good. Lord, my sister, make you look so today. Well, I mean, you know, you know who you can try that with, right? You know, you're, you're good friends. You know, sometimes you can't get away with it. But they're feeling such a way that they don't want to even hear that they're not, that they're not looking good. That they're not looking at their usual selves. You got to find a way to be uplifting. You got to find a way to help somebody. Not further push them down, but to help them up. Praise the Lord. So worry is destructive in many, many ways. And it can become a mental burden that can even cause us to grow physically sick. Worrying is the opposite of trusting God. And the energy that we spend worrying can be put to much better use in praying. So the song says, why worry when you can pray? Why worry when you can pray? 
So if you're going to pray, then that's, that means you have no place of worry in your life. That we don't have any place of worry in our lives when we are pray, prayer full. Prayer full. Eh? You know how to spell that word? Prayer full? Well, two words. Here's, I guess you could put, put, use the one with F-U-L. And I prefer the one F-U-L-L. Praise the Lord. Be not miserable about what may happen tomorrow. The same everlasting Father who cares for you today will care for you tomorrow. And if you're going to worry, there's no need to pray. And if you're going to pray, there's no need to worry. Profound, isn't it? Because the two of them don't work hand in hand. They're not complementing each other. They're poles apart. Matthew 6, verse 30. We see, Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? It's saying when we start to worry about something, what, are we going, what am I going to wear? What am I going to eat? What am I going to do in that situation? We're saying that we're not putting our trust and our confidence in God. Because he is able to take care of us. He has done it before, and he will do it again. And the song says, count your blessings. Name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. We are stuck in the worry groove because we have failed to remember, to recall, to bring to remembrance those things which God has done for us and continue to do for us. And we fail to appropriate his promise and said, I will be with you even to the very end. Or to say Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and so we don't serve a change in God, a God who's going to shift on us. We serve a God who we know is constant, he's consistent, and he will hear us when we call. Praise the Lord Jesus. So we, don't, we ought not to replace prayer and trust in God with worry. Rather, we ought to make sure that worry is replaced by prayer and that we really get prayed up because that's where we're going to get the, the victory. Then worry, worrying misdirects our focus. It shifts our focus. It turns it in another direction. As it, it's, it's as if you're going along and going along nicely. And, and the enemy of the soul says, Hmm, what can I do to distract that person? I can't tell them to go steal. Mm -mm, that's not it. Can't tell them to go curse. Mm, no, never heard them curse. Uh, uh, they don't backbite. Uh, ah, I'll, I'll have them to worry. I'll have them to worry about something. Yes, uh, something's happening in, in, in the life that... that, that, that could, could change shortly. So let them worry about that. Shifting the focus. Turning off the trap. Misdirecting the focus. You know, because you're always, you're, you're always giving that impression. Because God has been with you. You've been always positive. Always saying, yes Lord, thank you. Amidst the trials, Lord. I know you're on my side. I know you're keeping me. Always portraying a positive image. You think, you think the enemy likes that? No, 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 no. Some of the things which we undergo are tests that we must pass to get to the next level. Abraham was tested. Abraham was tried and tested. He had to, do, he had to go through his tests to get to the next level to get the victory. We must pass the test. We must pass the tests that come in our lives. And in, in the natural, so in the spiritual. 
You go from grade 1 to grade 2 to grade 3 and go right through progression. We have to, because of the system, we have to pass some tests along the way to see if we have learned anything and to see how we can apply what we have learned. So it is in the spiritual, spiritual realm. We are going to be tested. There are going to be times when the enemy is going to come at you and say, uh-huh. Let me see if you will pass this test. And we must pass those tests. Amen? So developing a Christian attitude towards worry. And we may be moving a little, a little fast, but we've got to redeem the time. And I say we must acknowledge and confront the issue of worry and anxiety in our lives. We must acknowledge and confront the issue. And you usually don't know that you're stressed until after you've passed through. Right? You're usually not aware of the level of stress you're undergoing until afterwards. You look back and you say, well, wow. I was really under some pressure there. You did feel a little thing, but you didn't know the full extent. But somehow, when it's lingering for too long, then we have to make sure that we confront this thing and not let our new normal be that new stress position. Stress, stress, stress. Tired, tired, tired. Angry, angry, angry. No, not so. Because that's not how the Lord would have us to be. We must confront the issue through constant self-assessment. At the end, uh, not even at the end, all through the day, we ought to be playing over in our minds what our conversation has been, what our actions have been. Because we don't want to make the same mistake time and time and time again. And if we're examining ourselves and finding that, well, stress, anxiety, and worry playing a big part in how we're reacting to things, then we need to confront the issue. We need to believe in and practice the scriptures because that is where our strength will come from. Philippians 4 verse 6. And that says, be careful for nothing, but in, every, in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. That is put there for a particular reason, prayer and supplication, but with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving means that we expect the prayers to be heard and to be answered. Amen. Amen. You're not convinced of that? You don't think that is how it ought to be? That's how it ought to be. We ought to be saying, thank you Lord for this. Because we know that we trust, uh, put our trust in a big God. And we know that he cannot fail. We will fail so many times and mess up and get off the track and get distracted and divided and defeated and all kinds of different things. But Jesus never fails. So he said, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known, made known unto God. We've got to make it known because he is the only one that can help us. Remember at the beginning I said, put the things that we worry about in, 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 in a list and take out those things that God, we, we figure God should work with, should, should help with should work with or he alone can solve well he alone can solve certain things psalm 37 verse 1 starts off with fret not thyself don't fret don't take things so seriously that you're gonna worry and pine and be anxious and be stressed whatever it is we are saying, fret not thyself. And it goes down at the end of, at the end of verse, verse uh, 7 or 8. 
Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. It you know, tells us again, don't fret. Psalm 42, verse 1. More scriptures to tell us how we ought to behave, how we ought to, how we ought to do what we have to do for the Lord. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? That something within me not feeling quite right. Why is there this quiet within me? Lift up, man. So in other words, as it were, we are, we, we are telling ourselves, no, we cannot stay in this position. We got to snap out of it. We got to get out of this. Because what? We serve a great, big, wonderful God. Hope thou in God. Come on, soul. You can't go that direction. You got to go that, that direction. Up. Amen? We're not going to be of a heavy heart that is all down. But we're going to be lifted up. Praise the Lord Jesus. Psalm 55 verse 22. Cast thy burdens upon the Lord. And he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Cast thy burden upon the Lord. We have a God who can bear our burdens. Or do we come to the altar with our, with our sack of burdens, kneel down, put it down at the side, and then get up and take it up and gone again? Isn't that how we really behave? Come on, man. We in, the, in God's house. It never happened to you. Well, it happened to me. Come with a sack of cares and concerns and worry and anxiety. Put it down right beside you on the altar. I mean, I mean you don't, and, 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 we, and I realize that we do something in, in, in what we call prayer. It really just talking to God, you know. Sometimes we're not really interested in hearing what He might have to say. Because He might tell us something that we don't want to hear. No, we just talk to God. We talk, talk, talk. God, we better do this, God. God, 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 yes, yes, yes. Do this, do this, do this, do this. Give me this, give me, give me, give me, give me. And at the same time, you know, he's saying, all right, all right, all right, I heard you. I heard you, I heard you. I'm going to give you this thing. But go over to Brother Darby and talk to him about this thing. But you never had time to listen to him. What, 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 what you were saying. So we have the problem still. And figure that God not hearing and not answering our prayers. Because we have not done it properly. Yes, Mr. Sharon. We get comfortable with the sack sometimes. We really don't want to let it go. Because it has now become a part of our paraphernalia. Huh? How many people stop praying for Bishop to get up out of that chair? Eh? Because what? We cannot get comfortable seeing Bishop in him chair now. But when, when Bishop first said, his chair locks, everybody was saying, Lord, give him, give him strength. Get him to get up, Lord. Make him walk again, Lord. We don't want to see him in that condition, Lord. But after a time, you start to find something else to pray about. But you know what that means? What that says? Faith. Yeah. All kinds of different things. But we get comfortable with the problem sometimes. And we are comfortable with it to the point that we don't want to let it go. First Peter 5 Verse 7. Um, casting. 
cares upon him, for he cares. He cares for each and every one of us. Let us cast our cares upon him, because he is able to bear them. He is that big God. Then, we got to be realistic. In developing a Christian attitude towards worry, we got to be realistic. There are some persons who have set for themselves some very unrealistic goals, targets, and as a result become very stressed when they are not met. But they were unrealistic from the start. They were, they were not very well thought out. You know, some people, there they're they're got to be people like those in this world have some very big ideas, but they will never be able to implement them. Because what? They need people to help them now to put flesh to those ideas or to bring, break down those ideas into workable portions. So let's be realistic in, in our approach. Let's be realistic in how we think about things and how we do things. We ought to also replace sinful habits of worry with the godly habits of faith, trust and obedience we've got to replace the sinful habit of worry worry and anxiety replace those with faith faith in God can move mountains we got to replace it with trust I'm going to trust in the Lord with all of my heart and lean, not going to lean on my own understanding, but I'm going to say, because I don't know exactly what is to be done, I'm going to say, Lord, you take care of it. And even when we know, then we ought to say, Lord, I'm going to embark on this. This is what I intend to do. But if it is your will, Lord, then frustrate that plan and give me another way of, of achieving this. Not because we can get up, get in the taxi and get downtown, mean that well. We don't have to talk up to God about it. We cannot weary God. As much as we might think that, well, we're just wearying God when we talk to him, let's be a friend to him and have that relationship with, with him that we can go to him with every little thing. Because some people think that only the big things they can go to God with. Well, go to him with every little thing. Lord, thank you. I went to the doctor today and... The doctor didn't find anything wrong with me. Thank you. Yeah? Went, for, went, for, went to the dentist and all he had to do was clean. Didn't find any cavities. Thank you. You might think that's a little thing, but all right. It's something to be thankful for. In everything, give thanks. Some practical solutions or suggestions. Because when all is said and done, we are in this flesh. We are in this body. And while there is a spiritual dimension which is supposed to order how we, how we deport ourselves, how we behave, it's supposed to be this, the thing at the top that directs everything. It's supposed to be the head directing everything. But we know that in this flesh dwell no good thing, right? And so we need to do whatever we can physically to make sure that that spirit has a body to work in. So rest and relaxation. That's, that's necessary. We cannot be burning the candle at the two ends and in the middle and expect that well, it's going to be one whole candle and everything is going to go all right. We got to take time for rest and relaxation and spend some quality time. Um, spend some time doing some things which are fun to us. And church should be fun, but church should not be the only fun. Amen? But I'm not sure to say that before Bishop Thompson and Bishop Hewitt. Well, he's not giving you any license. But it is just to say that there is another dimension to our lives. Too many of us have used church to neglect our families. And is way down the road when anything gone bad 
it sour, it stink, it crash, that we're realizing that, well, had we reordered our schedules, then it wouldn't have gotten, it wouldn't have gotten that badly. We need to know that there are other people in our household that are looking to us to be examples. People are looking to us for help and for support. And so we have to have, we need to have balanced lives. So please, let us spend some quality time with our families. It may be that you so want to be here, but let the pastor know that, Pastor, I'm having a little challenge. I want, I, I, I'm wanting to spend some time with the family on Friday night. And you know, that was dec dec decreed already. But every time we do it, we find something else to put back in the space. It's as if, it, it's as if we're saying we cannot have a night off from church. And that's not, that's not good because that does not make us very balanced. We should share our concerns, share the concerns we have with other persons. Some people are very private, but in a family like this, we don't need to be private. We need to have friends who we can talk to, friends who we can, persons we can relate to, persons who may be going through the same things that we're going through, but just, just, just so fearful of expressing them to anybody. But if we are going to be dealing with worry and anxiety, then we need to share the concerns that we have. And if that person is not able to help us, but they may be able to put us onto somebody who will help us. We need to get help. We need to be action-oriented. Don't always say, well, yes, this is what I'm going to do. This, this is what I'm going to do. But let us arise. Let us get up and go and do something, man. Too many people have contemplated and contemplated and contemplated and worried and worried and gotten anxious and nothing at the end of the day. Be action oriented. You can fix something that you have broken, but if you sit down and fold your arms and never do anything, the only fixing for that is to get up and do something. We must get physical exercise. And I'm guilty there too. Diet good, no smoking, no drinking, that kind of thing. What's the salt, what's the sugar? But not getting up and pounding the, pounding the pavement and, you know, break out a sweat or anything like that. We need to be physically active as well. Then I have this one, I say we should sin less. Is any, is any in here going to be sinless? No, but we can sin Less. You get it? All right. Well, smart, you know, smart, smart, smart. And hold us in our very, our very thoughts. So don't be, don't, don't let, don't be thinking that well is something, some big thing that you do. Our very thoughts we can sin in. How we treat God, we can be sinning through that. How we treat our fellow men. And of course, pray. We must pray. We must have that communication with God. It's two-way communication. So we speak and he speaks. And it must be in a situation where he is able to hear us and we are able to hear him. There is reaction, interaction. We must pray. So in conclusion then, we ought to know ourselves. We ought to know whose we are and who we are. Because that is going to determine how we behave. That's going to determine what we think, how we do, um, put what we think into action. We must remember God because he's omniscient. 
Matthew 6, 32 to 34, it talks about him knowing everything. Our Father knows what we have need of even before we ask. He knows everything. He's everywhere. So we can't hide from him. We can't hide, we can't hide from God. He is very much with us. And when we think we've gone around the corner and God can't see us, he is very much there. He sees and he knows everything. And he's all powerful. He, had a, he has the power to cut us off. But it is not that kind of God we serve. We serve a God who's going to give us a chance at repentance. We serve a God who's going to give us many chances at repentance. At putting things right. Because without that, then his word, his very word, would, have, would, would, would not have been true. Amen? So let us know that we are his and he is ours. We need to have that relationship with him when he can say, that child is mine. That is my daughter. That's my son. I'm in whom I am well pleased. Praise the Lord Jesus. We worry about so many things. But may God give us the grace and the strength to daily, daily put those aside. When we catch up ourselves and we find that we are worrying, then let us say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. Because I don't think he's pleased when he sees that we worry so much. When he sees that we don't trust him enough. When he sees that so many times he's delivered us. And this time, we have taken things completely out of his hands. And start to behave as if, well, he's never done anything for us. You know, we always talk about, oh, you know, we've, we did, we've always been doing good for the person. The, 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 the 99 times and the one time I didn't do something. They tried to crucify me. Well, don't we do that to God as well? All your anxieties, all your cares, bring to the mercy seat, leave them there. Never a burden we have to bear. There's never a friend like Jesus. All your anxieties, all your cares, bring to the mercy seat, leave them there. Never a burden you have to bear. Never a friend like Jesus. Jesus took my burden. Could no longer bear. Jesus took my burdens. In answer to my prayer. My anxious fear subsided. My spirit was made strong. For Jesus took my burdens. And left me with a song. Jesus took my burdens. I could no longer bear. Jesus took my burdens. In answer to my prayer. My anxious fear subsided. My spirit was made strong. Jesus took my burdens. And left me with a song. Jesus took my burdens, I could no longer bear. Jesus took my burdens, in answer to my prayer. My anxious fear subsided, my spirit was made strong. Jesus took my burdens, and left me with a song. Jesus took my burdens, I could no longer bear. Jesus took my burdens in answer to my prayer. My anxious fear subsided. My spirit was made strong. 
Jesus took my burdens and left me with a song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The songwriter further said, are you weary? Are you heavy hearted? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it. You can tell it everything to Jesus. So he is a friend. That's well known. And you have no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus. When you can't trust, when we can't trust our brother or sister, we can tell it to Jesus. When we can't trust other persons, we can tell, tell it to Jesus. God bless you. We cannot be worry-free, stress-free, or anxiety-free. But we must certainly do our best to make sure that we do not get consumed by it. God bless you. Amen. You can do better than that. Put your hands together for a teacher tonight. Let me see the hands of those of us who refuse to worry. We're going to deal with this worry giant. teacher says that we can worry ourselves into sickness hmm? reminded me of a story I heard that death visited a village and when death arrived at the village he saw an old man at the gate of the village and the old man says death what are you doing here death says I'm here to do my job and he says what's your job death he says I'm here for 10,000 tonight the next morning he saw death and the old man was very upset at death the old man says death you're cruel says why you said you came for 10,000 but 70,000 persons died death says well I don't know I took 10,000 but worry killed 60,000 Let's be careful that we don't worry ourselves. Touch your neighbor and say, don't, don't, don't worry. About a thing. Everything is going to be all right. Amen. We're going to offer the opportunity to ask just one question. Is there anybody with one question for Brother Barnett? Is there one? Going once. Going twice. Stand, everybody. It's offering time in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you.